Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd have a little fun this morning and react to this Markle documentary. And apparently Lady C is going to react to it too. So we shall see. I do a lot of serious topics on this channel. So every so often I like to, you know, check in on the saga <laughs> with the royal family and Meghan and Harry, the Markles. So let's take a look. And in a world exclusive, Australia's Channel 7 will air a never before seen look at Meghan Markle this Sunday, featuring an extraordinary message from her family, including Thomas Markle, her dad, who I'm glad to report is re-finding his voice. So have a look at the bombshell trailer, which has just been released. The world has never seen Meghan like this. The homecoming queen. The Markle family reunite. This would be your last interview ever. Treasure. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see Mr. Markle, Thomas Senior, you know, looking reasonably well. It's good to see him looking well and, you know, a lot better um, after having a stroke. So that's 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 great to see. Of memories, home truths, and secret tapes are all coming out. She would still be a waitress if it wasn't for Dad. We're not going to go away. This is going to change everything. Very unhealthy for each other. It's a toxic relationship. Dad's deathbed plea to the daughter he lost. How can I fix this? On the eve of the coronation... Oh my gosh, that's heartbreaking. That is so heartbreaking. I don't understand. It's just... He doesn't deserve what is being what is happening to him right now in my opinion he does not deserve it okay he took some paparazzi shots something that megan does once a week hiring him back every five minutes and it's since come to light that she knows the photographer she has since done a photo shoot with this photographer she knows him they work together all the time and he just happens to be the photographer who set her dad up hmm interesting there's a theory going around, and Samantha Markle has alluded to this, that she set, it was Meghan who set her father up because she didn't want him to go to the wedding. She never wanted Mr. Markle, Thomas Sr., to meet Harry because he would basically just debunk a lot of the narrative that she put out there and basically told Harry this victim narrative when really it was her father who who gave her everything. She was well taken care of. She went to private schools across the board, which again, kind of refutes the claims that she made in Netflix, that she was raised by her mother, her single mother. The inside story. Harry already had a lot of these thoughts and feelings and Meghan just kind of emboldened him. And is this the biggest Prince Andrew bombshell yet? What was your relationship with Prince Andrew? What? Okay, Andrew. Apparently they're less popular than Andrew now, so... <laughs> Lady Victoria Harvey is going to... That's going to be interesting. Let's see what she says. I'm going to watch it now just for her. Because <laughs> she, she has some insights into the whole thing. I, I believe she, um, she thinks the whole thing was a setup with with Andrew. She believes the photo is fake. And, you know, Virginia Dufre... She was unable to produce the photo in court. So, yeah. I don't know how it's connected to Megan. There's a lot of theories, but, you know, I don't like to put things out there without any substance. So I'm not going to get into that. But there's, there's some theories about Megan, Andrew, yachts, you know, things of that nature. But that's what I'm going to say. So a lot to unpick there, Lady C. But I think... The thing for me that is actually most upsetting, and I know that you are very fond and close with the Markle family as well, is that Thomas Markle is a decent human being. He is a good guy. You can see how difficult it is for him to speak because he's still recovering from the stroke that nearly took his life a year ago. And all he's asking of Meghan, Lady C, is how can I fix this? But she continues to ignore him. 
Well, the reality is he can't fix it. There's nothing for him to do. And incidentally, did you notice that his mouth is distorted, which is obviously a sign, a, res a residual effect of the stroke. So, you know, there's no doubt he had a very serious stroke. But he can't fix it. He didn't break it. It's up to her to fix it. You know, he really has done very little compared to, when you stop to think what she and Harry have done, the way they have violated everybody's privacy, the lies they have told, the, in, the intrusive uh, interviews they've given. I mean, what Thomas Markle did, which was simply trying to uh, restore his dignity, was really a bagatelle compared to what they've done. And how dare she think that her father should be put in this invidious position. I mean, they have been forgiven over and over again by the royal family. What they have done has been overlooked and overlooked. <laughs> they have not had titles stripped from them. They, in fact, they've gained titles with their children now being prince and princess. And they can't extend that same grace towards Thomas Markle, an elderly man who had a stroke, who had heart attacks. And she still hasn't gone to, gone to see her father, yet she talks about compassion every five minutes just to boost her own profile as a so-called, you know, humanitarian. I don't think he has anything to do. I think it's up to her and I think she ought to hurry up and do it. Yeah, and I'm sorry if she doesn't, I judge her because this is her father saying, I'm probably close to death. Now, I hope that's not true. You know, I hope Tom has the vigor to fight on. And I know that Samantha, his daughter, and his other son, Tom Markle Jr., are going to support him. But the reality is he is pleading with her just to get in touch. Yes, well, you know. Oh, sorry, you come in, Phil. Go on, Phil, go on. Go yeah. on, Phil, go. <laughs> we'll give you your voice back too, Phil. I thought that was directed at me. Yeah. No, I mean, it's one other thing. I've always felt incredibly sorry for Thomas Markle. I mean, the fact that they're now living in America and they can't be bothered to go down the road and see him in Mexico, I think it's is, is absolutely cruel. It's absolutely unbelievable. And you remember that uh, that interview that Harry gave when he was promoting Spare, saying that she'd lost her father. Well, she hasn't lost him. Uh, it's up to them to make it up to him. But uh, it looks like the Aussies have got hold of a bombshell there, doesn't it? Some old footage and uh, some sensational interviews. So. Uh, yeah, and that, that in itself sums her up. To say that Harry lost his father, she, she cuts people off like that, including her own family. In an instant, you're dead to her. And she wants the same for Harry and his family too. To actually say that shows that, you know, she's not about family. Family isn't her priority. She is her priority. It's all about her. And Harry's just as bad, obviously. Well, let's hope we can see some more of that program over here. It looks incredible. Of course. Now, uh, back here, a high court judge has pointed out glaring inconsistencies in Prince Harry's phone hacking claim against the publisher of The Sun, NGN. This is Mr. Justice Fancourt, who said that Harry claimed to know about a secret agreement between news group newspapers and Buckingham Palace that prevented him launching litigation in 2012, while also claiming he, can fu he only fully appreciated the scale of the hacking in 2019. But the judge questioned why the Duke had failed to make reference to the alleged deal between the newspaper group and William in his original claim. Oh, so Meghan lies under oath and Harry does too. Yet, never any accountability. Now, royal sources say that Harry could have received a payout, just like his brother Prince William, who quietly settled with the company in 2020, but, quote, he went rogue. So, Lady C, the issue here for Harry is that the judge doesn't care that he's a prince, the judge isn't just going to accept his narrative. And actually, on the show last night, I went through his witness statement and picked holes in it. It's simply not truthful, Lady C. They're so brazen with their lies. That's why I do these videos, because I, can't, I just can't believe people are still taken in by this couple. They are so brazen with their lies. They don't care about race relations across the Commonwealth. They're happy to lie and falsely accuse people of racism for their own gain, for their own publicity, for to gain sympathy, 
to make a name for themselves. They're happy to do that, collecting awards here and there. And they're happy to lie on other people, invade people's privacy, but yet they want to cry victim all the time. Well, the judge has made it absolutely clear that he has problems with the fact as Harry has pre presented them, and that they are why the, the present witness statement is completely at variance with his particulars of claim. And the, basically, you know, that means that Harry is an unreliable witness, that you can't rely on anything he says. A, a, a rather more perfunctory would say, you know, the judge is saying very elegantly, he thinks Harry is lying, that he has come up with a new version of the facts to, uh, to really gouge out the eyes of news group newspapers, because his old version of the facts is not going to wash. And, I mean, it's, it's as big a condemnation from a judge as I've ever heard about a potential lit uh, claimant's evidence. Yeah, and Phil, the extraordinary thing about this witness statement is he's not just going for the newspapers, he's going for his own family. Yet again, he's going for Charles, he's going for Camilla, he's going for William just nine days before the coronation. I know it's extraordinary, is it? I mean, we all know he likes rewriting history, but I mean, when you think about it, before Meghan came along, um, he and William were so close. I just don't believe that William wouldn't have discussed phone hacking with him, he wouldn't have discussed with him the tactics to deal with it, and indeed Charles and the Queen. So... I think he's just making it up as he goes along, really. And what fascinates me is he's got these three cases now, hasn't he, against the sun, the mail and the mirror. What happens if he loses them? Is he, is he going to give up with all this uh, legal nonsense and carry on with it and, and just keep mounting up the costs? Or is he going to finally sort of take one step back and say, look, you know, there's really nothing to be gained by this. It's, it's quite sad to watch. It's almost well, it destructive. They never lose. <laughs> they never lose these cases. Now, Samantha Markle... Her case is still ongoing. A lot of people um, believe that she had lost and had been thrown out. So she's resubmitting her, her case and she's going to, you know, talk about Netflix. You know, that case is still ongoing. So we shall, you know, watch this space and see how that turns out. It's a deranged mission now. It's a deranged mission. Uh, but look, can we cross to L.A. because Harry and Meghan were spotted on a romantic date at a Lakers basketball game this week. I'm going to say romantic like that, because, of course, they were caught on kiss cam, uh, Lady C, where it appears that Meghan pulled away from Harry. But instead of this actually being an intimate night together, uh, Lady C, apparently, this was actually a group of lackeys and employees surrounding them, including their lawyer, PR executive, and a load of Archwell staff. So, Lady C, this whole thing looks staged to me. Am I being unfair? Well, of course you're not being unfair, Dan. It's obviously been staged. It's, it was staged to knock out Louis' birthday. Where are their friends? They're so isolated. And those children appear to be very isolated too. Where are their friends? Anyway. And to muscling on the coronation, it's also giving the message that the separation rumours are not true, but they might be true because she can't even allow him to kiss her. You know, the, the problem with Meghan and Harry is there's so many subtexts with their narratives. They just throw things out the way people throw sand in everybody's face. And I actually think that if you examine what they've done, it cost about $20,000 to have their employees, who are employees supposedly of a charity. She also has her lawyer and her business manager, who, contrary to reports in the papers, are very second rate. And where were all those people when the French documentary makers went to Archwell and it was the offices were completely empty? <laughs> where were all those people then? They are not first rate. They're not of the first rank in Hollywood. They have always been second rate. And they've boosted her financially, and she's boosting their reputations, they hope, with her celebrity. Except, of course, her celebrity has become pretty much infamy, hasn't it? Mm. Phil, do you think they're OK? You know, are you getting any sense that Harry and Meghan are leading separate lives? 
I, I don't think they need any separate lines, but it was a bit more like the office party, wasn't it, than a romantic night out. I mean, turned around and everyone else was there. But uh, I think it's all part of her relaunch. She looked quite different, didn't she? She's got the new hairstyle. I don't know whether she's had anything else yeah. done. But yeah. it's all part and, of and, and of course, Phil, of course, Phil, this relaunch just happened to come. Oh, I see you, Lady C. I see what you're hinting there. <laughs> this relaunch happened to come just before the coronation so she can steal all of the headlines. And if you look at, you know, those images of her as a child, she has completely changed her features. I'm not an expert on who's had surgery and who hasn't before and after and, you know, <laughs> she's completely changed her features. Her nose looks different. And of course her hair is completely, you know, she says she straightens her hair. She chemically straightens it. Um, so obviously she doesn't want certain features to be prominent you know, certain African features to be prominent. She's not, she wants to look as white as possible. I mean, that's what it seems like to me. And she don't want to be treated like a black woman. Just remember that. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm definitely going to watch this um, documentary. I, I'm, you know, good for them. Let them speak out. They're not the royal family. The royal family have to keep a dignified silence, never complain, never explain, all of that. The Markles don't have to do that. They can be as ratchet as anybody. <laughs> and, you know, tell it all. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.